Okay, so basically, there's this car company called Fisker that is technically going bankrupt right now. But why should you care? Well, their website is beyond awful for a modern techie startup. They do make some pretty cool looking cars, so while this video might be obsolete once they finish the bankruptcy process, it'll at least serve as a cautionary tale that if you have an iffy website, you'll go bankrupt. Okay, that's probably not entirely true, but I digress. Even taking a scroll through the landing page for their only production car, it's a little disappointing. It looks like they tried to lean into modern design trends and, well, failed pretty miserably. So today we're taking this and turning it into a well-designed masterpiece that probably can't save them from bankruptcy, but could inspire you for your next project. In order to redesign this, we first need to understand why this whole website is poorly designed. For the homepage, there's nothing wrong with it, there's just nothing on it. I don't mind this sideways text, but having it stick with you as you scroll is kind of distracting. As for the Ocean EV page, this is a rare case of overusing white space. Along with the giant text, it makes the website feel disjointed. Just by pushing some of the elements closer together, we create hierarchy, so each element isn't floating by itself. Then down below we have more specs with smaller text, which almost separates the website into two completely different styles. This is a little less of an easy fix. We'll need to adjust the information architecture to make this work. It's also just way longer of a page than it realistically needs to be. We're going to tighten things up and make it feel a lot more cohesive by doing a full overhaul. As with all the videos, stick around to the end to get the entire Figma project file for free. And if you're interested, join my design community with over 11,000 designers in it. Link in the description. Let's do this. All right, now we're gonna need some inspiration. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of most of the EV websites. They mostly copy Tesla with this stacked full screen image approach, which in my humble opinion is kind of lazy designing. Arrival is the same idea here along with Polestar. Lucid has a much nicer design, but my favorite by far is Rivian's website. Like, can we take a minute to just appreciate this navbar? Images and navbars should be a regular thing. In a recent video about Google's AI, I was mad that they literally had a single section as their entire website, and I'm equally as frustrated here. Like, the only point of this page is to redirect us to a different page with more information. Besides just being well-designed, websites need to be structured in a way that makes sense, and this just isn't it. Since Fisker really only had one car in production, there's honestly no need to have a homepage. We can skip straight to displaying the supposed perks of the car. All the other pages can be linked in the nav, but won't be the focus. We'll follow the content layout of the existing page somewhat, but because we're getting rid of the homepage, we'll also slip in a mission section and a blog section at the bottom. Mostly just to talk about them joining the Extreme E off-roading series. More on that in a little bit. Okay, so most automotive websites start off with a giant hero of their most popular car. Or in the case of Fisker, their only car. And I was like, well that's dumb. Don't get me wrong, we're still gonna have a giant hero, but we're gonna have a little more fun with it. The first step is to find a suitable image for my master plan to replace this garbage. When searching on Google, hit tools and filter for only large images so you're not left with a grainy image when you blow it up. Write that down, that's a good tip. This image could work, but the subject is a little too large, so when we make it full screen, it'll really punch you in the face. Instead, we need something more zoomed out like this. Before we pop it in though, see how on the original site, this text overlaps with the focal point of the image? That's bad, especially since we could just slide this text over a teensy bit and fix the whole damn problem. But when we put in our new image, that stops working. Instead, I'm gonna start tracing the top of the car. You might be wondering, Cole, what the hell are you doing? But just bear with me. We'll position our text, subtract our shape, and voila, we've got text behind the car. I'm gonna take this opportunity to get rid of the side ribbon and just place the logo up here like normal people. I'm also going to collapse these links into a hamburger since this is the most important car for right now. For this section I've been drawing my inspiration from this design I made years ago, so naturally I was planning on having this info bar on the new design. This will allow us to take this information from down here and move it up into a more convenient spot and even add a little more. This is why we needed a zoomed out image because if we use the first image the bar would overlap with the car. I'm also going to pop a small description of Fisker's off-road package of the ocean, which will create a section for a little later. I hate to say it but this is already looking more professional than Fisker's actual website. Onwards and forwards. Next up is our call to action section, which is very important since we don't have a CTA in our header. Firstly, these images suck. Having one with a background and one without feels very disjointed, and this color combo makes my eyes hurt. Moreover, I don't love this dark theme for the entire page. Let's move these titles up here so we don't need to worry about visibility in the images, and then swap out the images for something more tasteful. Finally, I'm going to add a little hover animation that zooms out the image and pops up the CTA. Only when we hover on the CTA do we introduce our bright orange so it's not overpowering. It's tasteful animations like these that'll add to your website's premium feel. Okay, so as we scroll down, this text is useless, we've already used this image, and these stats are above too. So the next section we're going to touch on is the future forward features. This layout is way too spread out, and the difference in text sizes is much too large. Let's shrink this text and get a slider going just like on the Lucid site. This allows us to show off the images of each feature in a more compact and aesthetic format. 
If we keep scrolling past all this giant text and images, we get to basically the exact same section, just with different features. That's great, but variety in layout is a must, and this wouldn't be a good design video without at least one bento layout. So that's what we're going for. Originally, I was going to do a layout like this, but after considering that the images are in a vertical orientation, I needed to switch up the layout a little. I scrolled through good old dribble, found this design, and figured I could work with that. Pop the images on that bad boy and paraphrase a little. Okay, a lot, but if you need the specifics, just head over to tech specs anyways. Like, people aren't going to want to read through all these accordion tabs. They're just like four-year-olds who like looking at pretty pictures. Tell me I'm wrong. I did struggle with the color of this background since black seemed too similar to the audio system. Eventually I settled on literally just sampling from the image above until I found a gradient I liked. Okay, next is our mission section, and believe me when I say this is going to be a simple section. I'm talking stupid mega crazy simple. All we're going to do is grab an image I found online, add some text and a button, and that's it. But I'm picky, and I want a little more blue at the top of the photo. If we zoom in, hopefully you can see this isn't solid blue. We could use AI, but instead I'm going to duplicate this image, flip it vertically, and crop it down. Pretty smart, hey? Write that down too. The trim level section was also meant to be pretty simple. Take these tabs and turn them into columns with some photos and some specs. The only issue, all the trim levels look the same. Fisker and other brands just use different colors of their car to signify different trims, but I hated the images Fisker used and couldn't really get better images. So what's the solution? Find some images that are good enough and hide them behind the next section since they aren't essential for this section anyways. Add titles, descriptions, and text specs. But compared to the rest of the website, this is an awful lot of text. It is, albeit, important, so we'll tuck it into a little see more button. When we on the image, it'll slide up like this. My plan was to have the off-road section be by itself, but since it's more of an add-on, let's add buttons for the models it's available for. We'll steal the idea of a light box from Rivian, so when you click on the button, it brings up a card with details about the off-road package. This will keep simple with a full-size photo, some text overlaid, and a gradient to make the text a little easier to read. And I almost forgot an X. With that out of the way, we need a CTA. Instead of a button, we're gonna have a search bar to find dealers near them to check out the car. Other than that, there's not much to comment on for this section. For the blog section, I wanted to add this to talk about Fisker's participation in Extreme E, an electric off-roading competition. I was taking inspiration from our first call to action section, but it felt a little boring. Instead, I moved the images to the right and changed up the font of our heading text. But when we add a newsletter sign up below, everything feels a little too lined up. So let's take this middle one and flip it to add some variety. Finally, I'm going to 100% copy the footer on the site since with the amount of links that need to be at the bottom, there's not a ton we can do. Let's look at the original Fisker site. And here's what we've created. If you want all of the design files, it'll be the first link in the description down below. Also, consider joining my design community with over 11,000 people in it, with a design challenge that has $2,000 in prizes. That link will also be down below. Feel free to roast both the Fisker design and the one I've created down in the comments. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.